All right, let's be honest, the RTX 5080, everybody wanted to love it, but it got absolutely flamed in the original lineup of reviews thanks to its fairly paltry performance uplift over the RTX 4080 Super. And at the same price, well, it didn't have a whole lot of people excited, but the RTX 5080 has a trick up its sleeve that could actually make it a whole lot faster. And in fact, even the RTX 4090 might wanna be wearing its brown pants because it might just soil them after seeing these numbers. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now, you can get a Windows 11 CD key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 11, just search activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you wanna learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so the RTX 5080. In my review, yes, it did do pretty well overall in terms of performance, and at 9.99, hey, at least it's better price to performance versus the RTX 4080 Super, and it is $200 less than the 4080. So yeah, it could be worse, but it's certainly not an exciting graphics card. However, I did find on my card that it actually overclocked like an absolute demon. I was able to get a 450 megahertz overclock on the core. I unlocked the power and the voltage, and I was also able to get a six gigabit per second overclock on the memory. All in all, that's gonna give you well over three gigahertz. In fact, sometimes reaching into 3.3 gigahertz on the core, that's a massive clock speed increase. And it's also gonna get you 1,152 gigabytes per second on the total memory bandwidth, which is in fact actually more memory bandwidth than the RTX 4090, despite the fact that that's a way more expensive card and has a much wider memory bus. And that's some really impressive results out of an overclock, the likes of which I haven't seen in a very, very long time. It certainly seems like Nvidia has has left some gas in the tank, you could say, on the RTX 5080, but how does this actually scale in games? Because sure, you might be able to get a massive overclock out of something, but if it doesn't give you any more performance, well, then it doesn't really matter. Well, today let's go ahead and find out by testing it on my test system using DDR5 and a 9800X3D. All the full system specs will be in the description below if you wanna learn more, but let's get into the nine games real quick and find out whether or not the 5080 overclocked can dethrone the 4090. Now, the first game is Black Myth Wukong 4K Cinematic, and yes, I will be running all my games here at 4K native during these tests, and this is probably going to be one of the least exciting ones, as overall you can expect around a 13% performance improvement over the RTX 5080. Now don't get me wrong, it's significantly faster than the 4080 Super, but the overclock isn't necessarily anything to get too excited over, and it is still technically losing to the RTX 4090, which did have the same 18 FPS 1% low, but two more on the average. Next up we have Counter-Strike 2, and here we did actually get a more substantial increase, around 15% percent higher on the overclock versus the stock RTX 5080. And oh, I forgot to mention this is the Founders Edition model, so AIB models might actually do even better, but a 15% uplift is pretty decent, and that does actually put it just behind the RTX 4090 in terms of 1% lows, and actually a little bit ahead on the average FPS. Very interesting stuff. Then we have Cyberpunk 2077, and here, once again, it is just behind the RTX 4090, and this time is only gonna give you around a 10% uplift, so not too much in that game. Then we have Dying Light 2, and once again, we're back up to 15% gains, roughly, with the RTX 5080OC versus default clocks, and this time it's actually dethroning the RTX 4090. And keep in mind, that's a far more expensive graphics card. 62 versus 61 average and 55 in the 1% lows versus 53 on the RTX 4090. Very impressive stuff, and it's certainly mogging the RTX 4080 Super at this point in time. Then we have Fortnite DirectX 12 4K Epic hardware ray tracing on, and the RTX 5080 overclocked once again dethrones the RTX 4090. Now the 4090 did have a touch more on the average, but with 68 FPS, it is faster than the 64 FPS on the 1% lows of the RTX 4090. Then we have Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered 4K, very high settings, and and here the RTX 5080 overclock is just around 12% faster than stock and is behind the RTX 4090. Then we have Monster Hunter Wilds 4K Ultra and we actually did get a pretty substantial 
18% uplift on the RTX 5080 overclocked, and that does actually put it just ahead of the RTX 4090. Then we have Returnal 4K Epic, and we get a 14% gain here, putting it roughly just behind the RTX 4090. And finally, the Talos Principle 2, where we do get a smaller 11% gain, which once again puts it right behind the RTX 4090. And if we do the average across nine games, well, versus the RTX 5080, we did only see on average and on the 1% lows, well, an average of a 12% uplift, which isn't super exciting, but if you do actually go ahead and compare that to the 4080 Super, we're now talking about a card that's around 31% faster on average and 24% faster on the 1% lows. That's actually a pretty decent generational uplift if they had actually shipped it like this out of the box. And to be honest with you, they maybe actually could have. I do think there's a lot of overclocking potential here and it won't suck down too much power, just over 400 watts on the Founders Edition, it seems like, versus the higher 300 watts if you run it at stock. That's really not too much of a difference and I think they really could have done it. And the most impressive thing here, even though it isn't a massive overclock overall, it does put it at basically a tie with the RTX 4090. Now the 4090 is still just a touch faster, two FPS more on the 1% lows and the averages. It is technically still the winner, but you could effectively call this a tie, and with a card coming in at $9.99, assuming you can get it for that, versus a $1,600 card, well, at least on paper, if you can overclock an RTX 5080, you're basically getting an RTX 4090 for a way, way lower price. Again, assuming you can actually get it. And that's very impressive. The only major difference you're gonna see is that the RTX 4090 has 24 gigabytes of VRAM versus 16 on the RTX 5080. And to be honest with you guys, by the time 16 gigabytes is not enough, it's very likely that you'll probably be wanting a newer graphics card anyway. Although if you do wanna try and hold on to it for a long time, yes, the 24 gigabytes of VRAM will allow the RTX 4090 to age better. And so I guess at the end of the day, yes, the 4090 is still gonna draw a little bit more power than the RTX 5080, even with its overclock and giving you roughly the same amount of performance if you could choose between the two and buy them new at the same price. I guess I would still recommend the RTX 4090 over the 5080. Sure, you can roughly match it with an overclock, but that's overclocking versus a stock card and you still could overclock the 4090. And again, it has more video memory. That being said, the 4090 is often way more expensive and to be honest with you, you're probably gonna be far more likely to find a 5080 closer to its MSRP soon as it does seem like cards are starting to come in stock finally, starting with the 5070. I've definitely seen quite a few of those at and around the MSRP popping up all over the place. And it's only gonna be a matter of time until you see the 5070 Ti and the 5080 follow suit. But overall, very impressed with the RTX 5080 overclocked. It does finally match the RTX 4090. It's just a shame that it couldn't do that out of the box. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the RTX 5080 with an overclock is worth it considering you're effectively getting a way cheaper RTX 4090 with just a little bit less memory? Or do you think it's still too expensive? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.